my life as an underground commodities dealer. My life as an underground commodities dealer, John Andrews. Unemployed and desperate. You ever been there? Because I have. Right around the time I started hanging out with a bunch of people I would regard as purveyors of underground commodities and services. But I was desperate and they were recruiting. It started simply. I would run some errands, drive some people around, and soon I was thrust into a world full of pain, suffering, and death. I told myself that we were meeting a need in the community, but that was kind of the problem. Nobody wanted us. They needed us. We made their problems go away when all their other options failed them. And after doing this for a little while, I realized I didn't want to be a bit player in this show anymore. I wanted to run it myself. So I went back to college, wrote my board exams, and for the last 11 years, I have been a licensed funeral director. <laughs> what did you think I meant when I said I was an underground commodities dealer? <laughs> when my mom found out I wanted to do this, she was, pun intended, mortified. <laughs> Be honest, if you had a choice between your son joining the mob or funeral service, meh, it would be a tough call. Let me tell you some of the advantages of being my kind of underground commodities dealer, particularly if you're ethically flexible. <laughs> Single people, this is a great way to get dates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easy. They come to you, they need a shoulder to cry on, and just in case you got your eye on the one who's, uh, how can I put this, newly single again? <laughs> hey, when they're ready to love again, you have earned a place in their heart. <laughs> now, let's say I meet an attractive young widow and I want to take her out on a date. A gentleman brings flowers, doesn't he? Bang! Undertakers, get free flowers! <laughs> Honey, technically they're used, but they still smell nice. And I was thinking of you when I stole them off the... Ah, that card's not for you, hold on. <laughs> Say I've had a few dates, and it's time to take this relationship to the next level. Want to look in her big, pretty eyes and ask her to be mine forever. Ah. Gonna need a ring for that, aren't I? Bang! Undertakers get free jewelry! <laughs> hey, what I said was, I want you to have grandma's ring. I never said it was my grandma's ring. <laughs> If you get the option to marry an undertaker, say I do. Because when you ask us, how was your day, the answer will never be, meh, nothing special. We see it all. And I'm not just talking about the gory stuff either. The things you live people have asked me to do in my career have been downright mind-boggling. Like, do I need to bring in pants for my dad's viewing if the lower half of the casket is going to be closed anyways? We consider that dignified. Yeah, bring in his pants. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir, but do you give seniors discounts? <laughs> well, who do you think does all the dying? <laughs> I once buried this little Italian lady, and her family said every time they saw her, she was eating a piece of bread. She loved it. Could we put a piece of bread in her hands in the casket? I said, no problem, except they forgot to bring in bread. Being quick thinking, I said, it's Christmas time, our receptionist baked some sugar cookies. I could put one of those in her hands, it would look about the same. No, no, she can't have that, she's a diabetic. <laughs> one day, one day a lady actually asked me to tie off her husband before I buried him. When I say tie off her husband, I mean exactly what you're thinking right now, okay? She didn't want him down there getting frisky with the ghoul next door. So she asked me to get a piece of cord and... I'm trying to keep it family-friendly here, okay? 
Lady, here in Canada, our wedding vows are contingent on a five-word clause, till death do us part. It is selfish of you to think you're the only one who gets to date again. <laughs> no, no, you are free, as is he, leave the man be. <laughs> See, if I told you you were getting a speech tonight about death from an undertaker, would you have wanted to hear it? Of course not, because death is the scariest topic you can bring up. But you don't look scared, you look quite relaxed. You know why? You've been laughing. And let that be a lesson to you. The big takeaway from my speech, laughter is the greatest weapon we have against fear. You can't be afraid of something while you're laughing at it. Okay, laughter's not always obvious, but found humor is a little like found money. It's extra sweet. I bet you thought you couldn't joke about death without being morbid or gross, but you found that's not true. I bet you thought an undertaker could never make you laugh, but you found that's not true. I bet you thought all undertakers were big, scary men in black who'd never smile. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fear has robbed humanity of more hopes and dreams than failure ever could. Because you can recover from failure and maybe come back even stronger. Fear takes you captive, but if you go through life armed with the most powerful weapon we have against fear, laughter, you will overcome more challenges in your life. And don't listen to these negative people who want to tell you laughter is a bad thing, something negative. You know them? This is what they say. He laughs at everything. It's a coping mechanism to him. In my life as an underground commodities dealer, I've seen things you couldn't pay your therapist enough to help you unsee. <laughs> and don't get me started on the things I've smelled. <laughs> Do you know why I'm not curled up in the fetal position every night? Because to steal a line from a great Canadian band, the Bare Naked Ladies, I'm the kind of guy who laughs at a funeral, can understand what I mean, you soon will. <laughs> Laughter is not a coping mechanism, Toastmaster. It is a survival skill. Because if learning to laugh is a coping mechanism, so is learning to swim. For he who laughs, lasts. Madam Chair. One minute of silence.